Hey folks, I'm excited to show you today a new addition to the Logo Package Suite. It's called Logo Package Forge. Now, if you've watched any videos on my channel before, you may have seen that I already use Logo Package Express, Logo Package Swatch, and Logo Package Portal. But I'm really excited to do a deep dive today into this new addition because it's going to help you with font choice, font lockups, and also logo layouts. And it's going to help you do it in a much, much faster time. So let's dig in. Okay, so here we are, we're inside Illustrator. And once you've installed Logo Package Forge, you will find it in Illustrator under Window, Extensions, and you will see it here. So if you just click on that, it will open up this palette. So let's take a look here. So one of the first things I wanna talk through with you is the organization that you can have of fonts within Illustrator using this application. So the first part here is it shows you all of your fonts that are in your system. So you can kind of scroll down and see what's there. Um, if there are some that you, you know, you like or your favorites, then it's really easy to favorite them. You just click on the little star here and it will add it into your favorites folder. If you want to remove it from your favorites, just click on the star again and it will take it out. If you click on the little arrow next to a font, if it has multiple weights, you'll get to see all of the weights that it has in there. And if you have fonts that you want to just hide and you, you don't really want them to take any part in this, then you can click on the little eye icon at the side there and it will move it into the hidden folder. And if you then decide you want to uh, see a font again, which you previously hidden, you just click on the eye icon that has a line through it and it will move it back into your all fonts folder. The bit that's really uh, most useful, I think, is the fact that you can create sets. So let's say you have, a, you, you maybe do a lot of um, logos for the tech industry or fashion industry, then you can create sets of fonts that you like to use for those specific industries to save you kind of hunting them down each time. And you can see here, I've already got a few sets made up. I've got a sans serif, a serif, and one called Funky Chunky. Let me just quickly show you how easy it is to create a set. So if you click new set and then give it a name, just type, you know, I'll just put set new. And then if you go, you know, into your all fonts, it's just a case of clicking and dragging into your set. And you can do that with as many as you want. And then once they're in your set, you can remove them again just by clicking on the X icon here. And if you remove all of the fonts, you'll see there that goes now goes down to zero and tells you that the set is empty. You can also rename a set by clicking on the three dots next to the, the set name. You can duplicate the set and you can also delete a set. So let's delete that. Okay, so let's look at creating some logo type using Logo Package Forge. So the first thing we need to do is actually add some type. So you see there's a, a field here, type logo text here. So I'm gonna type in bra beard. And that's a fictional, uh, product or company that I'm starting for beard oils and beard waxes. I wonder why. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I've got this set called Funky Chunky and I chose a few fonts that I like the look of um, and I'd like to test out uh, using Local Package Forge. So I've got the set selected and what I can then do is click on make logos and it will make logos using the set that I have active here highlighted in blue. But one thing to mention is that when you add logos into a set, if you just drag, you know, you drag the whole thing across, it will default to, so a regular weight, for example. So let's say, you know, regular here. I've done a little, I've used this before. So Brawbeard is in bold because I've chosen that way. But let's, uh, let me show you what it would have been like. So it would have not had bold, it would have had regular. So when it creates the artboard using bra beard text, it would have created it using the regular weight. But what to do is you just click on the little plus and it will add the bold weight. Now, if I leave regular there, what it'll do is it will create 
two art boards, one for bold and one for regular. So that's also useful if you, you know, let's say you know which font you want, but you want to see the different weights and how that will look, then you can just add the different weights and it will create art boards for each different weight. So it's really useful in that respect as well. But I'm gonna take out regular and just have bold. And I'm gonna check these other ones to make sure. So there we see that one's regular. I'm gonna choose bold. Um, another piece of advice is that if you happen to take both weights out, it will remove the font from your custom set. So you would need to add the font back in again. So make sure you've always got at least one weight selected in here. And then if I go to Lubag and add bold there and remove regular, I now know that it's going to create art boards using the bold weights. And let's do that now by clicking on make logos. So you can see we've now got the three artboards uh, with the uh, fonts that I chose on there. Um, looking at those, but I want to see them. I want to see them stacked rather than in line. So you can see here we've got you know vertical, but I can't click on anything, and that's because we need to have multiple lines. So if you click on Add Type Line, it adds a new line here, and I can take out Beard. Move that space there and add it into that line here. And you can see now that this has become active. We've now got horizontal and vertical. We can adjust the spacing, we can adjust the tracking, and we can also choose the alignment. So right now we've got it on justified, and we've got a spacing of 20 between the top line and the bottom line. Um, and vertical is chosen, and I'm just going to click make logos. So you can see now it's added that in and it's justified. So the text on the top, because it's fewer letters, um, it's made it larger to make it fit width, uh, width wise. If I was to choose centered, then it would keep the font size for the same top and bottom line. And so you would have more of a gap um, or extra sort of space left and uh, on the left and right hand sides. So I'm liking uh, the uh, Lubag font. I kind of like that. And to be honest, I like all of them, but I, I do like the, the Lubag one. So now that we've kind of got that, what I want to check out as well is I want to check out what a tagline would look like. So I'm going to take Beard out of that second line. And I'm going to add it back into one line. And then I'm going to add a slogan or not slogan, a tagline. And I'm going to say beard, bams, and oils. Okay, so we've now got that in there. Um, I could have kept um, bra beard on two separate lines and added another type line, so it would have been bra beard as we see here um, in these this second column, and the tagline would have gone underneath. But I just want to see that in a, in a different format. So this is now on one line, um, and I also want the tagline to be in a different color. So I can click on the little circle there and it'll open up my color picker. I'm gonna go for a red, just choose a red there, click OK, and you'll see that now changes to red, and I'm gonna click Make Logos. And so you see we had that on centered, and it's centered the text, and it's kept it all the same size. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that once it generates the artboard, these are all editable. You can go back in and edit, you know, anything you want uh, in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look at Justified and I'm going to hit Make Logos again. And this is the great thing about it is if you say, oh, actually, I want to see that in a different color or, you know, Justified or lower spacing, just change it, hit Make Logos and it and it does it really, really quickly. So I can now, you know, start to see which format I'm really liking the look of and I do like the you know I'm liking the Lubag font and that one's kind of standing out to me as the one that I want to kind of use um, for this for this brand so the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, look at maybe having a different font for the um, brand name and the tagline, and that takes us into targeting, font targeting. 
So what we can do is you can see here on the left hand side of the, the text, there are these little sort of target buttons. If I click on the one for bra beard, what I can now do is I can choose a target font and say, okay, I like um, Lou Bag for bra beard, but I want to kind of see what the tagline is going to look like in maybe a different, you know, maybe a sans serif or a serif that's not, you know, part of the custom set that I had. So what you can do is choose a partner set here. And when I click on this, you'll see that it shows all of the custom sets that I have. So I can choose my sans serif custom set and I can click make logos. And what it will do is it will keep the brand name in the font that I like, and it will then let me see what the tagline looks like in the serif fonts. Now you can see it's done these in a, in a lighter weight because these are probably um, set to, yeah, set to the default regular weights because I've not been in to change those. Um, but I could go in there and I could add bold and then I can regenerate these artboards to see how that looks. So this has let me kind of very quickly visualize which fonts I think are going to work well together. But let's take a you know another step with this, you know, and look at a logo that actually has a symbol. How can we bring that in, you know, into Logo Forge and work with that? So what we want to do is we will go to the logo mark option here, and you can see we've got the set mark button. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a document that I already have, and I've got a logo set up here for the brand for Bra Beard and I can select it and hit set mark. And what that will do is that will add an artboard into the one with the type so that it can reference that when it's creating more artboard. So if we move this across and here we've got this T symbol and that's basically going to show you where the, the logo placement is going to be. So it's either going to be top, middle or bottom on the left or top, middle or bottom on the right when it's horizontal or if I go to vertical, you can see, you can choose um, left, middle, or right, top, or bottom. Below that, um, you've then got the scaling of the logo. So the scaling is in a, a percentage of the width of the text. So if you have 100%, it will make it the size, so it's the width of the text. Um, and then we've got the spacing of the logo from the text. So if I just leave these as they are at the moment and I have that set to top middle um, and if I click make logos you can see now that that now adds the symbol in so I can now start to get a much better picture of how everything's going to start you know to work together um, if I decide that actually you know maybe I want to try it in a horizontal and I actually you know you've maybe got different um, different logo concepts that you want to try out. So you would basically just click on this little X to remove it and it will take the board off. And then you can go back to, you know, your document where you've got the different logo concepts. I've actually got this one where it's looking to the right and I kind of want to try that in, in a horizontal mode. So I'm going to set that mark. It brings that back into the document, as you can see there. Um, I want to change this now to, um, horizontal and I want the logo to be on the uh, left in the middle so it's looking through or at the type. Um, I'm going to probably make that 30% and spacing I will make that 20. And if I just go back to look at check everything here, um, I can change the alignment of the of the text but I'm going to keep it all justified and I'm just going to hit make logos. Okay, so I've kind of chosen the, chosen the size which is a little bit too small. So let's quickly go back in here and let's change this and let's make that 50%. Um, click make logos again. As I say, it's super fast, so you can you know you can try everything out and see see how it's all how it's all looking. Um, and I can kind of you know from here I can kind of zoom out and and just quickly scroll back and forward. If I was doing this manually and having to kind of go through all my font and just, you know, go and choose, you know, drop downs, changing fonts and 
drop down. It's it's it just takes up so much more time. And you know, we all know when we're generating logos and creating logos, your time is what you're being. You know, time is valuable, and you want to kind of be able to generate and get through. Uh, you know to rule stuff out as much as choosing the right ones and if you've got something like logo package forge to help you do that you can really get through a lot of um options and choices much more quickly uh than you could um if you're doing it all manually so you know i've got to a point where bra beard is is getting very close and then what i can do is i can go okay yeah i like these and i can now take these into you know another document and start to polish it up and and you know finalize that logo well there you go folks another amazing addition to the logo package suite i know that when i'm working on logos moving forward i'll be using this all of the time if you'd like to get your copy and get a nice discount as well use my affiliate link that you can see on screen right now ryb.rocks forward slash forge and when you add the product to your basket add the discount pixels inc and you will get 20 percent off so with that being said i will see you next time stay creative